Big Lottie gang, what's good? Excuse my voice, it's still a little early in the morning. So I've had a lot of people asking me to drop full workout routines. So this week, I got something special for y'all. I'm gonna take y'all through what one week looks like for me working out as a professional basketball player. I'm in my off season right now, so my workouts look a little bit different than they would in season, especially since I'm bulking right now. I wanna be able to play at a heavier weight next year. So this is the time where I'm trying to put on as much muscle as possible, but still maintain being explosive and mobile. Now I don't use the same routine for every split. For instance, today we hitting chest and back. I'm not using the same chest and back routine every Monday, every single week. It changes up. But today, y'all are gonna get a full routine out of me. Also remember that everybody's body is different. So just because it works for me doesn't guarantee that it's gonna work for somebody else. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't give it a try. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe as we get into this video. And without further ado, let's get into it. We don't got no sponsors for the YouTube yet. So I'm not showing too many brands as I go along. I can get ready to make my morning protein shake, get a little bit of breakfast in my system before I go to the gym. Like I said, we ain't got no sponsors yet. So don't ask me what brand of pre-workout or what brand of protein I'm drinking. I will show you all this Spider-Man blender bottle that I use for my protein shakes. I like this. I like this a lot. This month's flavor of protein, cookies and cream. It's gonna be a good day. This isn't the same shaker that I use for my pre-workout though. I actually left that one in the car, so I packed one of these with all my pre-workout, creatine, everything like that. Again, we have no sponsors, so I'm not telling you what brand of pre-workout I'm taking and what brand of creatine I'm taking. However, this is kind of cool, ain't it? <laughs> All right, y'all, so we just pulled up to the gym, and for today, I'm gonna be at the YMCA in Cary, North Carolina. So like I said earlier, we hitting chest and back today before we get onto the court. Now I'm getting ready to let y'all know what my splits are gonna be for each workout each day this week. Monday, obviously, chest and back, that's today. Tuesday, we hitting a quad focus leg day. Wednesday, we hitting shoulders and arms. Thursday, we hitting a hamstring focus leg day. Friday is a unique kind of day. Chest, shoulders, and arms all together. I'm trying to put on as much weight as possible, but I still wanna look good when I take my shirt off, so you know, that's why I kind of focus on the, the problem areas. You know, I don't got big biceps. My shoulders is kind of broad, you know, could be broader and everybody wants a big chest, you know what I'm saying? Saturday, it's another leg day, but it's completely explosive. So more Olympic lifts, training different ranges of motion, things like that. And then Sunday is active recovery. So I'll do some cardio, core, obviously some court work, more mobility stuff. And then I'll also show y'all what my stretch routine looks like. I don't think I'm gonna do this vlog style video every single day. For the rest of the week, I might just do a little intro at the beginning and then we'll get straight to work but let me know what y'all think in the comment section all right time to get the pre-workout ready like i said before we ain't got no sponsors so don't ask me what i'm taking outside of it just being pre-workout and creatine don't even ask me what kind of shaker bottle this is all right they don't sponsor us just know that i'm natty <laughs> there's just no i don't take i don't take an ounce of nothing illegal nah <laughs> god I hate when I hate when that happens when the when the dust uh from the pre-workout and the creatine flares up, especially in the in the car. Dang, now I got the hiccups. <laughs> oh god. Hurry up and take this. Two shots of vodka. <laughs> One thing I do like about this bottle, again, they don't sponsor us. There ain't no blender ball in it. The mix is kind of nice. Debating on whether I'm gonna drink it all sophisticated like, mm. or if I'm gonna chug it like a college student. Probably gonna chug it. Ah, See, that's the only thing I don't like about this. This, this happens with every bottle, not just this one specifically. You get the, the remnants of your creatine get stuck on the side of the container. So now I got to go back in with some more water because creatine is expensive these days. So I ain't letting none of this go to waste. We, we getting all of it. We getting all of it. Pause. There we go. We're good to go. Just going to wait for... why so many people have trouble grasping this concept. I'm a basketball player, not a bodybuilder, not a power lifter. I'm just a hooper who likes to pick up heavy stuff. I stand 6'4", around 205 pounds. Today, we lifted heavy, but we not maxing out. I rarely ever max out. 
Starting off on the bench press, we're gonna start off with 205 for 10 reps. We're gonna go up to 225 for eight reps. And we're gonna go up from there for a last set of six reps. After that last set of six reps, we're gonna drop it all the way down to 135 and get as many reps as we can. Burnout set. Enough talking, let's get into it. <sighs> Lightweight, baby. Son, they shook, cause ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Scared to death, they scared to look, they shook. Cause ain't no such things as halfway crooks. Obviously, cause of YouTube copyright, I can't like show y'all what I'm listening to. Y'all can't listen with me. But comment your favorite song on your workout playlist. All right, 225 for eight. Let's knock it out. <sighs> ah. Not the cleanest, but I'll take it. During those moments when I get stuck, when I'm benching like 225, I start remembering the days where I couldn't bench one plate. And I think about how far I've come. Even on a fail set, I still feel like I've accomplished something. Comparison is a thief of joy. So don't get caught up in comparing yourself to others. Cause to the football players, the bodybuilders, the power lifters, this ain't nothing. But my hoopers, 225 for reps, We've come a long way and we're still going up because we're just getting started. And that's awesome. Encouraging people. Thank you. I, I try my best. The gym culture is supposed to be as encouraging as possible. So I, I, I try to spread as much positivity as I can. So good. Thank you. Thank you. So good. What's your name? I'm Brandon. Brandon, I'm Nan. Nice to meet you. Nice to See, that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going. Positivity in the gym, when you got other people who are doing nothing but uplifting you, it's the best feeling. Makes you want to go even harder, man. Huh. Uh. 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 <laughs> Butt came off the bench a little bit. I don't care. But now we immediately gonna drop this all the way down to 135. Y'all see me on the court and y'all wondering how I'm finishing through so much contact? This is how. If you follow the workout page on TikTok, y'all should do that by the way. So that I make certain adjustments to certain exercises to make sure that I'm engaging more muscles. Getting ready to do that. I'm bringing the knees up when I do this burnout set. We actually gonna change the camera angle on this one. That's better. All right. Let's see how many we can get total. We're not relying on no type of leg drive. Keeping the core tight. Ah. Oh, this feel like. Man. Might mess around and get 30. Maybe we won't get 30. That's 20 right there. 25. 27. Oh. Yep. Catching the crib. Ah, I'll take 27. If I had if I had leg drive, I probably would have got 30, but oh no. No, nah, don't worry about me. I'm gonna be good right here. Just uh just uh edit this, move on to the next workout. Now nah, bro, you got me on here looking like a bitch. If you can't tell, I'm starting to sweat through my tank and the pump cover. GBT shorts. GBT pump cover, GBT tank under. Russ, uh, I need that sponsorship, man. Uh, somebody tag Russ Swole and tell him I need GBT to start sponsoring some other athletes. Feel me, cause, cause we support. <laughs> Full transparency, this is really my second set and I spent a lot of time recording that first set and breaking down the purpose of this exercise and the mic wasn't connected, audio went out. So this is take two of this. <laughs> Upper region of the chest. And we're starting off with chest flies. We're not using dumbbells, we're using cables. There's no rest point when you're using cables. When I'm here, there's tension on the muscle the whole time because the cables are constantly pulling my arms apart. Whereas with dumbbells, you're relying on gravity. You're holding it, your elbows and your shoulders downward. For those who don't know, the muscle fibers in your chest grow out this way. So keeping the tension with your arms moving out and having to bring them back in 
is a little bit more beneficial. And like I said, there's no rest point. So we're also keeping tension on the muscle throughout the entire set. And I know I sound like a power lifter, bodybuilder, whatever. Nah, I'm more of a bodybuilder. But I know, I know I sound like somebody who's not lifting for basketball right now. But trust me, later on you're gonna see how we learn how to play through the fatigue when our muscles are tired. Playing through fatigue is more than just being able to run the long distances and then go play basketball while you're tired. We're gonna shoot when our arms are dead in the fourth quarter. Be explosive when our legs are dead in late game situations also. This is where we train for all of that. Ah, two. Controlled, yet explosive. Controlled, yet explosive. <sighs> Ooh. Look at the YMCA dropping some motivational gems for us. For the culture. Going on to incline presses. But again, for those of you who follow the workout page, y'all know we're making adjustments. Going single arm for 10 reps each arm. We also bringing knees up to keep our core engaged the whole time. Ugh. Also balance and core strength. Ugh. <sighs> Come on, y'all. You want to be different, you got to work different. So when y'all wonder why my upper body is just as explosive as my lower body, uh, for windmills, between the legs, powerful dunks, uh, this is why. <sighs> it's not time to look at the pump yet. It's gonna be amazing at the end of the video though. Right, so now we increase in the weight. Uh, two sets, eight reps, heavy. Probably gonna wind up going heavier than this too. Uh, yup. We could definitely go a little heavier. Last set of eight, let's get it. Good work, good work. Nah, what am I mother? We about to have a small waist, broad shoulders, big chest. The aesthetic is gonna be crazy. And I'm gonna look like a Mack truck coming down the lane. Like, ooh, that looks scary. That looks scary. Ugh. And just wait till they see that I have no lineup so I don't give a about nobody's life, including mine. <laughs> okay, so the audio in my mic went out around this point when I was talking, but don't need to worry. I got you. We moving on to the lower portion of the chest by supersetting these body weight dips with dumbbell pullovers. We don't want to put too much strain on the shoulders, so we're going to cut off the range of motion at about 90 degrees on the body weight dips. Just enough to feel a little bit of a stretch in the lower pec muscles. Keeping the same thing in mind for these dumbbell pullovers. Keeping a safe range of motion so we're still working the lower chest, but not putting too much strain on your shoulders. All right, so now moving on the back and I'm starting off with some wide grip pull-ups to warm up my back. Oof. Ah, that's tough. I can feel the pump through the pump cover. Like, I know, I know it's all in my mind right now, but the pump cover is feeling like a compression tee right now. That's how, that's how pumped up my muscles feel under this, okay? <laughs> Stop, chop, shut them down, open up, chop. Oh, oh. That's how rough riders roll. Whew. Oh, gotta put this up a little bit. You know, we're a little taller. Lat pull downs. Whew. Whew. Made it to the last workout. Now, if you're struggling with lower back pain, and you wanna strengthen your posterior chain, I don't personally struggle with lower back pain, but that's because I automatically have these in my workout regimen. These are seated good mornings, and I'm gonna explain the benefits in the voiceovers. 
The seated good morning forces you to open up your hips while strengthening the muscles in your lower back. On an upper body day, this is perfect because it deactivates your hamstrings and glutes, so you don't have to worry about overworking your legs. Not to mention, it's a great core exercise that also strengthens the posterior chain. All right, quick pump check before we hit the court. Uh, whew, not a sweaty no more. Feeling good. Ooh, back feeling good, chest feeling good, looking good. Now the reason why we love a chest and a back pump, it feels so tight. Almost as if she's holding you again. Cups that are rose. Nah, I'm just playing. Let's go get this work in on the court now. One last thing before we head over to the court. I had somebody ask me when I was live on the workout page, why do I post so many videos in the weight room? It doesn't seem like a basketball workout page because you're only lifting weights. First off, let's go through three things. Number one, I have structured the workout page on TikTok to put in different playlists, different workouts. There is a whole court workout playlist with like something like 10 videos in it of nothing but on the court workouts you can do, be a better shooter, be a better finisher, better dribbler, etc. Number two, there's also a playlist there for people who do not have access to weights. It says no weights, no problem. So I'm gonna need some of y'all to do a little bit more research before y'all just look at the page and be like, oh, all he's doing is lifting weights. And then number three, the reason why I post so much content in the weight room is because other hoopers that y'all are seeing on the platform are not doing it. And for some reason, y'all have tricked yourselves into thinking that hoopers don't lift weights. And y'all are in for a rude awakening once you get to college and hopefully for most of you, the professional level also. We lift weights. Elite hoopers work on their body. We're not just lifting to get big and get muscular. That's just one of the perks. We're also lifting for durability, explosiveness, mobility, making sure that we're keeping our body safe and being able to handle the contact on the court. So for those of you who are saying, oh, he, all he does is lift weights, but then you wonder why I'm finishing through the contact the way that I am, I'm going to the line, getting and ones, but still shooting a high percentage from the free throw line, hmm. It's not a coincidence. It's because I'm lifting and then going getting my work in on the court so I know how to play through fatigue also. Just a little food for thought. Now let's head over to the court. Now Mondays, these are the days where I tighten up my mechanics. So everything looks a little bit more basic. But like I said, we are working through the fatigue after we just finished the lift. So we're gonna start off with some stationary ball handling that leads into some passing drills that I can do on my own. And then we're gonna do some form shooting we're gonna do some close shots. Again, focusing on mechanics, soft jumpers, and then finish up with free throws. Like I said, focusing on mechanics, working through the basics. Can't do nothing without getting warmed up first. All right, so after a good warm up, first thing we're going into is stationary ball handling. I don't know exactly what to call this drill, but I've been doing it since high school. It's pound dribble ladders. Pounding the ball as hard as I can for 10 dribbles with each hand, starting at 10, then nine, then eight, and so forth and so on, all the way until I get to one. As you can see, I'm losing the ball a little bit because my upper body is still tight from the lift, but that's okay. That's why we work through the fatigue. Once we complete the ladder going down, we string together a couple of crossovers and then we work our way right back up. One, two, three, all the way back up to 10. I love this warm up because it's great for hand speed and also getting a feel for the ball before you get into your live drills. Also notice how I keep my head high to make sure that I'm scanning the floor at all times. After that, we've got dribble combos into single hand passes. The goal of this drill is to string together combos and get the ball out as quickly, accurately, and efficiently as possible. Even though the fundamentals of passing teach us to snap the ball with two hands we all know that in a real game situation there are times where you're gonna have to play the angles and get the ball out quicker with either hand that you're dribbling with i'm not afraid to show that even i make a few mistakes here and there we're gonna continue to work through mistakes and work through the fatigue that's the only way we get better going even further into the drill we're gonna start moving with our dribble combos and going through the same target practice drill like before 
Now we mix in some ball manipulation combos. Starting the combo with the V dribble that allows you to manipulate the direction of the ball without carrying it. Now let's get some shots up. Starting off with the basics and making sure our shooting mechanics are strong. Single arm form shooting, focusing on one fluid shot motion. Also making sure we're shooting up and not out and make five in a row at each spot before you move on to the next. Same thing with classic form shooting, making sure that guide head isn't affecting your shot. Only this time we're making 10 in a row at each spot before we move on to the next. Then before we go any further, I like to start putting up free throws. I like to to hold myself accountable so i need 10 clean makes in a row that means swishes and back rim drops no reward for shooters touch and if i miss i gotta start over now we get into our soft jumpers this is where i'm going through the full motion of my jumper but i'm going at close range to make sure that i have full control over my jump shot we don't want to switch up our form based on where we're shooting from then we've got an assortment of spot up mid-range shots my focus is the touch coming off of the footwork of each shot everything from a one two gather reverse pivot jump stop and a curl over either shoulder. I need to make five with each form of footwork that I have at each spot. Seven spots instead of five in the mid range for me personally. I like to add the extra two spots so I could get a good angle off the backboard. Never hurts to have a bank shot in your back pocket. After getting up and making all these shots, obviously we gotta finish with free throws. That's my exit price. 10 in a row, clean makes. After that 10th one drops, it's time to get bouncy for the one time. Hey! All in a day's work. That concludes today's video. I will be uploading the rest of this series throughout the whole week. Tomorrow, we're coming in, we got legs, and then the court workout is gonna look a lot different. So make sure you hit that like button, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications, because you're not gonna wanna miss out on this series. Big Lottie Gang, throw the foes up in the chat, we out.